All right, everybody, welcome back to another Ask a Dev Unreal Engine tutorial. My name is Kevin. We are going to be continuing our control rig adventure today, and we're going to be talking about how to give our animators control over setting an item into what is often referred to as world align world space. It's often used in rotation to counter animate, but best illustrated by example. So let's hop straight in Unreal, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here we are in Unreal Engine. What we've got is uh, our character's left arm in blue is set up to be what is traditionally called parent space or default space. The right arm, the red arm in red is set into world space. And what it's going to do when we rotate our character, you'll notice that the blue arm just behaves like it's parented in normal FK. The red arm is counter animating, it's counter balancing. What it's actually doing is it's maintaining its rotation relative to the world. There's one other control in here that's doing the same thing, and that is the character's head. This is what we're going to be building today, and we're going to be doing it two different ways. So let's hop in to method one. Okay, so what we have here is we have a reduced complexity control rig just so that we can focus on just the spaces. And what we're going to do is we're going to be setting up the, we're going to be using one method on the left arm and one method on the head. Now, before we can get started, we need to remember, because we still want to be able to control the actual controls as an animator, we actually need an extra node because we can't drive and control the same control. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use a null node. We're going to create a null node above each of our controls. That's going to be what we drive, and then we'll still be able to control the control. So to do that, let's go ahead and hop in. And over here with our left upper arm, I'm going to right click, I'm going to choose new, add null above. Now things are going to get a little bit wonky for a second here because we're not actually setting any of our default values. I'm going to rename this the ATT node. I'm doing that just once again, I'm not married to this naming convention, but it helps me keep things uh, until I learn more about what's going on. It helps keep things straight in my head. So these are the attachment points. And what we are going to do is we need to set these default values. So right here we have our neck and then our head. Let's go ahead and set the null. And we're going to be setting it to the head position. Let's connect that in. Now we need to make sure we are actually setting the initial head position. And also sometimes Unreal tries to help us and there's still offsets baked into some of these controls. So I want to make sure all of these are zeroed out just so that I have a good clean starting point. These should be automatically getting set, but just in case, let's go ahead and double check this. Okay, so that is our head and we're going to be coming back and revisiting this in a second. And then let's, uh, let's go ahead and do the upper arm. So let's go ahead and set this null. And we're going to set that equal to, let's get the bone. Make sure we choose initial. Now I have noticed that this can be kind of finicky. And by finicky, what I mean is we have nothing for example, we're controlling the bone here with the upper arm. You'll notice if I disconnect it, the arm pops into place, but my upper arm control is not currently placed properly. So let's just go ahead and try to reset these transform. I've noticed this uh, a couple times in preparation for this tutorial. So let's just see if we can get this back into place. And what I want is if this is correct, when we click on this control, this should be lined up perfectly to where our arm is. So just to show you what I'm talking about, if I put a new control underneath the upper arm control, ATT, you'll notice, look at where it's pointing. It's pointing right down the length of the joint. So something is still going on with our upper arm that is not, it's not behaving properly. So let's just double check. That's the control. This is the ATT for the null. 
and it's getting the upper arm bone position. The initial should not matter. So we know that the ATT node is correct. So something is going on with our control. Okay. Min max is all right. Initial is all right. So if we compile that, nope, our control is still flying off into space. There is zero reason for it to be there because as you can see, this new control, it keeps getting this upper left, ah, this upper left arm control is still getting a value that is somehow it's, it's incorrect. It's basically incorrect. So if I don't place the upper arm control, even though this is set to global space, it's somehow getting this value incorrect. So you need to make sure these are, these are correct when we start. So there's no version of this that seems to be getting the proper location. Um, but I don't want to get lost with this. I just want to caution you. If you have trouble getting this to line up, uh, it is entirely possible that something strange is going on because globally this should be exactly the same, but it's not. So I'm just going to disconnect that because what I need is I need that control there. So let's just roll with that. And it looks like we're having the same problem in our head. So I'm going to not place the head. Here's our head control. Wait, this is our head control. And I'm going to reset all of my head control defaults just to make sure that they're spot on. Okay, so our head and our shoulder in place. Uh, it's just something to be aware of, especially if you're adapting or uh, adopting a, a previously existing setup. Okay, so now we can get into actually going ahead and building out our setup. So what we need to do is method one for the left shoulder is we're going to use a rotation constraint. So let's go ahead and click on rotation or type rotation constraint. And the way we're going to do this is we are going to be constraining the ATT node. Actually, we can get rid of this visual control. We're going to be constraining that ATT null node that we created. So I'm just going ahead and filling this in. And the default parent that I'm going to use is going to be we could use the control or we could use the bone. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use the control. And so if we were to connect this in, this should not change our behavior at all. And when we rotate our spine, you'll notice that our shoulder still travels along correctly. Now, if we add in an additional parent to our rotation constraint, what's going to happen is that new parent that we want to use is going to be the root control. So let's change this to control and we'll go ahead and use the root. And you'll notice that we have weights here. We have weights of one and one for both the clavicle and the root. And if we rotate, you'll notice that our arm is sort of adjusting, but not all the way. That's because it's weighted 50. It's basically 50, 50. It's equally weighted to both the clavicle and the root. So if we set our clavicle weight to zero, and our root to one, when we rotate our spine control, you'll notice our arm perfectly counter animates. That's because the rotation constraint is set to the parent of the root. So all the rotations for the upper arm now are coming relative to the root control. So what we need to do is we need to give our animators the ability to control this so they could effectively change this weight from zero to one, depending on what they actually want to work with. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our shoulder and we're going to add an animation channel for this. So let's create a new animation channel. We're going to set it as a Boolean in this case, and I'm going to call this world align. And what we're going to do with our world align channel is we'll drag it in here. Let's get the animation channel and make sure we choose world align. And all I want to do is we're going to use uh, an if, so it's a little bit different than a branch. The way this works is it's going to give us a value depending on whether or not this is true. So here's what I want to do. 
if this is true, I want to return a float. So if it's true, let's return one. So if I'm set to world align, what I want to do is I want to set the weight of the root control to one. However, at the same time, I need to set the weight of the shoulder to zero or the, the upper arm to zero. And then we need to flip it. If the world align is false, I need to set the root control to zero and I need to set the clavicle weight to one. So to do that, all we need to do is subtract. So let's do a subtract in here, subtract. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract this value. So one or zero, I'm going to subtract it from one. So now walk, walk through this with me here. So if we look at this, when world align is true, the value that we output is one. What is one minus one? Zero. So if we connect this in, the top one will be zero when the bottom one is one. Now let's do it false. If it's false, this output zero. What is one minus zero? One. So when the bottom one is zero, the top one is one. We have now created a world aligned switch just using a little bit of logic. So if we compile this by default, our world align is set to false. When we rotate our spine control, you'll notice that the arm behaves just like it's parented in. If we go ahead and choose our arm and we switch on world align, you'll notice that our arm now counter animates. So with a little bit of logic and one rotation constraint, we are able to offer our animators the ability to align and control to the world. That was method one. Now we're going to continue this adventure. And we're going to take a look at method two. Method two, we're going to be working on the head. So rather than doing a constraint or a, uh, a rotation constraint, we're going to use project to parent because I don't know if you remember, but when I first described what project to parent was, is it's basically the idea of temporarily parent my object to the new parent, give me all of those transforms, but in the space that I live in currently, but without actually changing the hierarchy. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to set our transform of our head ATT null. Okay, so let's set the null. And what we're going to do is we are going to set it to, let's project to parent. Now, here's what we're going to do. In here, we're going to set what the, the child in this case is our null. So this will be the same. And then the first parent that we're going to use is, uh, the, the parent we're going to use is the root control. So let's go ahead and go root control, root, not root bone. I'm going to go root control just to keep it consistent for you all. So let's do the root control and then control again, root control. Where is it? Root control. Okay. So right now we've already seen that our head um, basically works as it should. And now what we need to do is if we connect this in, we need to set the rotations. What we want is we want the rotations not necessarily the translation. So when we connect our rotations in, what's going to happen is you'll notice that our head counters. However, it also does not have the proper location. So what we also need to do is let's get the transform of the head control. And we're going to connect the transform in for the trans translation. The translation of the control in for the translation and the rotation of the root. So now when we rotate, you'll notice that our head is able to counter animate because what's happening is the head null is saying, give me my rotation as if I was parented to the root. That's what this does. Give me my rotation, just the rotation as if I was parented to the root and for the control, give me my translation so that it will be in the proper place. Now, we need the ability to switch this on and off. So we're going to do the exact same thing we did with our upper arm control. 
and let's go ahead and add in an animation channel I'm going to set this to boolean same thing let's double click this let's call this world align and all we need to do in here is a simple true false test so let's take our world align and drag it out we're going to get the animation channel And if our world align, make sure we select world align here. If our world align is true, we are going to use the project to parent. The cool thing is if world align is false, we're just going to leave it at its default. So let's go ahead and test this. So now when we rotate, you'll notice our head behaves just like it's in FK mode, like it's parented straight in. Now. If we set our shoulder and our head both to world align, what will happen is when we rotate our uh, spine control, both our arm and our head are successfully counter animating to provide the animators with a world align node. And that's it. It's that easy. Two different ways to set up the option for the animators to have a world align per control. Now, there are actually other ways to do this. I thought that this would just be a cool little intro to two different methods that you can utilize and a nice stepping stone to full on space switching for a future tutorial. As always, if you like what we're doing, help us out, spread the word. Don't forget, a ton of our videos are in the live sections. We do live streams every week and you have uh, all the links for the Discord, Patreon, etc. if you wanna support the channel that way down below in the description. My name's Kevin. See you on the next stream. Take it easy.